Hi, my name is Aki and I'm a dietetics student at Mount St. Vincent University. I grew up in a small city called Amritsar, located in the northern part of India. I was raised by my grandmother and as part of my daily diet, she would cook me several North Indian and South Indian meals. I would try to learn my grandmother's recipes, but for some reason I could never get them right. All the delicious rotis made from a mixture of dolls, whole wheat and flour, and sabjis made from different kinds of haldis, paneer and various spices would make me want to never leave my homeland. I also visited several parts of India and learned about how similar foods were consumed in different ways in different parts of India. Today I am going to talk about a diet known as the Indian Dash Diet, which is an adaptation of the original Dash Diet. The Indian Dash Diet includes a mixture of both traditional North Indian and South Indian foods. It is high in fiber and rich in fruits and vegetables just like the original Dash Diet. DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. It is a well-known dietary pattern for lowering blood pressure and focuses on vegetable, fruit, low saturated fat, and low fat dairy intake. It is rich in potassium, magnesium, calcium, fiber, protein, and is low in saturated fat and sodium. Blood pressure is the force of your blood pushing against your blood vessels. It is important to maintain normal blood pressure as normal blood flow is needed to bring nutrients and oxygen to all parts of our body. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, makes it hard for the heart to pump nutrient and oxygen rich blood to our body. As we age, the blood vessels that deliver blood to our body can become stiffer which makes it harder for our heart to pump blood to our body. This happens faster in people with high blood pressure and the heart has to work extra hard. Stiffened blood vessels can make the heart muscles weaker and unable to pump enough blood for the body to function normally. This can lead to damaged organs, heart attacks, kidney failure, or strokes. Following a DASH diet can help lower high blood pressure the DASH diet can also help lower blood cholesterol and your risk of heart disease. In type 2 diabetes, it can also help control blood sugar. So what is the DASH diet? The DASH diet is rich in fruits and vegetables and whole grains. It also includes low fat dairy products, nuts, legumes, fish, lean meat, and poetry and healthy fats. It is high in fiber and nutrients and low in sodium or salt. How many servings of each DASH food group you need in a day depends on how much energy or calories you need. For people who need around 2000 calories per day, the DASH diet recommends they have 7 to 8 servings of grain. A serving is a slice of bread, half cup dry cereal or half cup cooked cereal, rice or pasta plus four to five servings of vegetables. That means a serving of one raw cup leafy green vegetable, half cup cut up raw or cooked vegetables, or half cup vegetable juice. Four to five servings of fruit. That means a serving of one medium sized piece of fruit, half a cup of fresh frozen or canned fruit, or one fourth cup dried fruit. Two to three servings a day of fat free or low fat dairy products. That would mean one cup milk or three by four cup yogurt or one and a half ounces of cheese. Two servings or fewer a day for lean meats, poultry and fish means a serving of three ounce cooked meat, poultry, fish or an egg. Four to five servings of nuts a week, seeds and legumes. A serving would consist of one by three cup nuts, two tablespoons nut butter, two tablespoons seeds or half a cup of cooked legumes. Two to three servings a day of fats and oils. That would mean one teaspoon soft margarine, one teaspoon vegetable oil, one tablespoon mayonnaise or say two tablespoons salad dressing. Up to five servings per week of sweets and added sugars can be included in the diet. But for these foods, a serving of one tablespoon of sugar syrup of jam is enough. For example, a cookie that contains one tablespoon of added sugars would be one serving. 
Now, what would substituting traditional Indian foods in the DASH diet look like? Servings of grains in an Indian DASH diet would mean substituting with Indian foods such as Rajgira, Brontas, and Jowar. Vegetables such as fenugreek, calabash, and sabji such as mutter paneer, mixed vegetable, methi, sag can be substituted when following the Indian DASH diet. Fruits such as Buddha's hand, langsad, bale fruit, that is also called the wood apple, falsa, also known as the Indian sherbet berries, can be consumed. Fat-free or low-fat dairy products substitutes such as dahi and raita, which are forms of curd in India. Now, Indian Dash diet is mostly based on vegetarian sources of protein such as moong dals, chana dals, harachanas, which could also be included as a part of legumes, and something like palak paneer, which is Indian cottage cheese and spinach curry, and is a major source of protein as well. This is also because of the fact that India is ranked number one in the world when it comes to vegetarianism, which gains its popularity from Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism. The religions are based on the concept of Ahimsa, which emphasizes on respect and non-violence to all forms of life. Vegetarianism in the country is associated with lacto-vegetarianism, where people eat dairy products, but not eggs. India has the lowest rate of meat consumption in the world as well. However, lean meats can be a part of the Indian Dash diet if someone wants it as a part of their diet. So foods such as butter chicken can be included in the diet. However, it can only be included as a part of the diet if some ingredients like cream in the given dish are substituted or used in minimal quantities for the Indian Dash diet to work. Fish can also be included in the diet as several provinces in India are coastal and there is a wide variety of flourishing aquaculture. Therefore, including fish curries made with katla, also known as the Bengal corp, bangra, also known as the Indian mackerel, and rawas, that is the Indian salmon. This diet includes four to five servings of a week of nuts as well. So foods such as curry pakora, whole moong beans, kaman dhokla, etc. can be integrated as a part of the diet. For fats and oils, it would include fats and oils such as desi ghee or safola oil, which is a blend of rice bran oil and other vegetable oils. Consumption of sweets and added sugars is to be considered for five servings or fewer a week. Sweets such as ladu, gulab jamun or kheer, which is basically rice pudding made with rice and milk, can be consumed, however, only in limited quantities, while substituting or limiting a few ingredients such as syrups and sugars. Moving on, here are some examples of foods included in the Indian DASH diet based on the food groups. The servings presented are based on a 2000 kilocalorie per day diet. Here are more examples of foods included in the Indian DASH diet based on the food groups. The servings presented are based on 2000 kilocal per day diet. It is essential to know that Foods in India are consumed in a different manner in northern and western India in comparison to eastern and southern India. In northern and western parts of India, stainless steel cutlery is used for the consumption of foods such as Indian sticky rice. However, in southern and eastern parts of India, foods are usually eaten with the use of hands. Stainless steel dishes are used in the north and the west. However, banana leaves are used in various southern states and bamboo leaves are used in several eastern parts of India. The pictures in the slide were taken by a friend of mine in the state of Tripura which is located on the eastern side of India and bordered by Bangladesh. We were visiting several parts of East India and I realized how the population would always use leaves and hands for the consumption of all foods. As someone who was raised in the north, I found it extremely hard and unusual to eat rice with my hands. In the north, we do not we do eat foods like baturas, naans, and parantas with hands. However, eating something like sticky rice with hands, it wasn't something that I thought I could do. So I couldn't help but ask the question, isn't it a little unhygienic? I was just a kid, so they didn't take offense to it. But one member of the tribe said, you know Winston Churchill, right? He was dining with our second president, Dr. Sarvapelli Radhakrishnan, and was advised by Mr. Churchill to use a spoon. 
To which the president of India replied, I, wa I washed my hands thoroughly, and since nobody has ever used my hand to eat but me, it is cleaner than any fork or spoon you would use. I didn't argue or say anything to it, but just embraced the culture and eventually started to really enjoy myself. Especially because they taught me how to make a food ball, how I should put my thumb behind the ball, mix it with the sub cheese and flick it into my mouth. Here's a sample menu for the Indian Dash diet. This is a common breakfast consumed in most parts of India. It is a simple recipe and is easily prepared in 10 to 15 minutes. It is also more convenient for kids and the older population as a low level of chewing is involved. Inclusion of vegetables such as carrots and nuts helps improve the nutrition value of the meal as well. The following breakfast and beyond program recipe can be incorporated in the Indian Dash diet as well as a serving of grains. Veggie upma is made from semolina, which is a grain product made from durum wheat. The recipe was developed by Dr. Priya Kathriwal. The recipe card and recipe video can be found on the Breakfast and Beyond program website. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you want to learn more about food and nutrition, you can visit the resource library on the Breakfast and Beyond program website. On the next slide, you'll find the references used for this presentation as well. Thanks again.